can't step with us. Check your resume, it don't measure up. Not close at all, too close to call. These niggas don't know the angles, close them off. If she fuck with me, she ain't pacing. Indiana nigga, post the ball. Welcome you to the Gary 365 podcast. I got my cutty bent coop in the building. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, give everybody your social media and everywhere to follow you and you, what you got going on. For sure, man. Uh, you can follow me on uh, IG at uh, ITS underscore Coop. You can follow me on, uh, matter of fact, my, my fault. You can follow my uh, my brand shit, Methods. Methods. Yeah, you know I'm saying mm-hmm. on Methods World, Methods mm-hmm. underscore World at uh, IG. You know what I'm saying? And then, uh, shit, look me up on uh, Spotify, all your major platforms, man. It's Coop. You know what I'm saying? Ben it's Coop. Coop, man. Ben Coop. Yes, sir. Uh, let's go down. You know, let's go. Let's start from the front from the beginning, man. Where you from? Where you grew up at? You know, tell them a little bit something about you know your story. Shit, uh, Seattle native. You know what I'm saying? Uh, grew up in the South End, pretty much Skyway mm-hmm. area. Yes, sir. Seeing went to Franklin. Me too. You know yeah, yeah. Sir. <laughs> you know, from the CD, yeah, I went yeah. to the Franklin, though. It was a fashion uh, show. It was popping, though. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, shit, man. I grew up in Seattle, bro. I'm from yeah, Seattle. Too. Rep Seattle, man. Mm-hmm. You see the Sonics hat. see the colors. Guaranteed. Uh, I fucks with it all, man. I'm from town, man. Yeah. That's what it is. Early beginnings, man. How was your experience and just growing up and coming up in Seattle? Did Seattle treat you right? Do you have PTSD? You know, did you love anything about it or did you despise or have resentment towards Seattle? Because the culture can do you right. It can do you bad, too. It definitely got its effects. Right. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know, man. I've been blessed with some pretty dope people in my life, bro. Mm -hmm. Some pretty uh, upper echelon folks, I like to say. And just, man, I don't feel like Seattle's done nothing bad to me, bro. Yeah. Honestly, man. One cool cat, bro. I be out the way. Handle my biz. Mm-hmm. Fuck who I fuck with. You know what I'm saying? And get the business. You know what I'm saying? And it's just yeah, bro. Yeah. So now I I won't say there's no like weird resentment for Seattle. Fuck yeah, me. yeah. That's the town for me. I mean, and that's the beautiful. But I understand thing. what you're saying though. Well, you know, culturally, you know, some people feel that there's a disdain for you know certain aspects of life in Seattle because. They didn't get to prosper, didn't get to evolve. So, you know, there's always uh, somebody to uh, be the scapegoat, and usually it's the city, you know? Bro, that's <laughs> – I don't know, man. It's it's the work ethic, man. Mm-hmm. I feel like definitely – I think we all know this. It's just like definitely Seattle, Washington, however you want to place it, bro. It's definitely they got their, uh, their culture of fucking with the selected. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Facts. There's a selected bunch. Facts. And they won't go past that boundary. I don't know why, but we all know that, right? Yeah. But it's just like, man, perseverance, bro. There's more strangers in the world than there are people in Seattle. Talk to me. So yeah. move out that box, bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? If that's what it takes. And then watch the city. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's weird why it got to happen that way, but mm-hmm. at the same time, bro, this is you got to understand where you're at, what you're dealing with. Yeah. That's just what it is. Have you been affected by the diversity in Seattle? You know, because, like, we have same things going on around the world, but then, you know, sometimes we're placed in a box where it's like you guys, you know what I'm saying, are spoon-fed because of the resources and, you know, the million-dollar, billion-dollar, trillion-dollar companies that are at your disposal. So you guys are like what Rick Ross said, eating Oprah's crumbs out here in the Northwest. Um, I don't think so, bro. I honestly don't. I don't place no blame on the outside. Mm, I like that. I don't know. Oh, it's yeah. just it don't fall well for me for it to be like where I'm at did this, who I am was just because of that. I mean, definitely it plays a factor, but I feel like if you got a plan, bro, mm-hmm. and you got the mindset to accomplish that plan, bro, you going to fall. You might fall short, bro, but you might succeed. Yeah, guarantee. You know what I'm saying? Guarantee. So it's just like if you put it to, to the test, bro, you put it to, better on yourself, man. Mm-hmm. Stay working, bro. Do what you got to do, bro, because that's the only way to really get it done. Honestly, you know what I'm saying. So I don't really feel like the diversity has like affected me in any way. 
any way. There's definitely some shit happening. Yeah. And yeah, I acknowledge yeah, all that shit, yeah. but it's just like, man, that's not where my, I don't think that's where my blame falls, bro. How is it uh, growing up in a household with siblings, though, and trying to, <laughs> you know, yeah. prosper, build, grow, and evolve to another level and what you want to do and be independent? Because sometimes people are subjected to the fact that there's a lot going on around me and his family, so I'm kind of blocked off or there's a roadblock or there's some type of shortcomings to what I'm trying to do because my parents, my mom, the family, the outside world, you know what I'm saying, is looking at me as just another person within, you know, the sibling chain or the, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, How does that affect you? You know what I'm saying? Trying to prosper in life, though. I think it has both kind of uh, effects to it, right? Because, mm-hmm. like, <clears throat> Growing up, how I grew up, I feel like that's what pushes me to succeed. Mm. That's what pushes me to do what I feel like needs to get done to accomplish mm. my success. Yeah, you know fact. what I'm saying? So when it comes to the other part of it, I mean, definitely just being within the, where you where you grow up and where you at, I think sometimes there can be some boundaries placed on, up on you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Especially sure. being from where you might grow up from, too. Mm-hmm. It's just like, definitely, I think there might be boundaries placed up on you. But at the same time, bro, that, that same group of people can lift you up. So it's an up and down battle. Yeah. It's an up and down like road. Like seesaw type. Yeah, the yeah. whole time. But it's mm-hmm. like, that's kind of who you really do it for. Mm-hmm. Facts. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just like... I don't know. It's like a double-edged sword type yeah. of type of question because yeah. this is like definitely there's gonna be boundaries for everything. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying so. I like that because yeah. you know, <clears throat> kind of moving through life and like you know orchestrating you know what I'm saying your identity. You know, you get to trying to figure out and find out who you are, but then you know there's a lot of roadblocks placed along the way because you know you're a part of this last name. Yes, sir. And, you know, with everybody that you got going on, that's in the family and, the, you know, what I'm saying the hierarchy, if you know, yes, is attached to that. So it's like, you know, I got to find my own lane, my niche, my place in the family name to where I can call off for my own to where I can represent, right. you know, what I'm saying this right. branch, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, so, absolutely. yeah. You know, that's just all it is. There's no resentment. I feel that and we're what you're kind of saying. And it's love. And it's like, okay, well, you know, I'm bent cool. You know, let me carve out my own lane and, you know, represent for the brand, which mm-hmm. is the family last name and for moms and, you know, pop, yes, you know, sir. whoever, you know, however, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, no, yeah. And that's exactly what it comes down to, bro. Mm-hmm. It's just like, man, I think I said this shit to someone uh, recently. It's just like, Bro, my mom might be the biggest person I look up to. Man, you shout out saying? to moms, man. That's AT, man. Damn. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just, I don't know, yeah. man. I'm about bro. to get mom on the podcast. Yeah, they don't yeah. even know, though. They don't even know. I'm about to get mom hey, to come really pop this. On, though, man, listen, man. Mom's you pops got this the life kettle. Stuff listen, man. Hey, financial she, literacy, hey, man. Bro, she trying to put people on. Talk bro. to me. <laughs> Um, sure, though, but yeah, man, what, just... um, as, 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 a, as an early, uh, male and growing into a man, teenager, you know what I'm saying? In a household, where did you find your early musical influences and your creative, you know, uh, strategies that make you want to start tapping into the music world and just being creative? Hmm. Man, I think bro, uh, to plainly put it, I feel like just growing up with my older siblings you know my older fam Mm -hmm. and shit bro i got connected to so many sounds and music just through the whole the whole family tree type shit you know what i'm saying my sister is you know a few years older than me bro so you know i got the tip the the r&b tip Talk you to know me. What I'm Shout out, sis, man. You know what I'm yeah, and guarantee. I grew up basically with my older cousin, uh, cousin Hurt. Yeah, Ray Brown. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah and, safe uh, travels too, man. He on his way. <laughs> and uh, shit, bro. He put me on to all that West Coast. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? All that Spice One. Shout out Ike too, yeah, man. And Ike Watson, yeah, man. Sir, bro, and talk just, to me. The family just, shit. It's just definitely like, bro. You know, just growing up how I grew up. You just said, you know, if I go with my cousin Ike and just, bro, just being tapped into this shit, yeah. bro. I think 
all my influences come from all them little different pockets, bro. Yeah, I think yeah. I wrote my, re- my first little rap, bro, and I was probably like freshman in high school. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I fucked with it, though. I don't remember what it said, but I yeah, fucked with it. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's where you got activated yeah. at, though. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah, kind of just fucked with it on the raps, uh-huh. bro, and just sure. been trying to bubble that shit up for sure now, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, um, so then you jump into, okay, I have a creative process. I might not know what I'm doing. I might not be able to articulate it, but I have an idea. So how did you release that to the public? Was it like, I'm not, hold on, let me press pause, or I'm just going to, you know, write hold something in my notebook in the archives and then, you know what I'm saying, whenever the opportunity for me to jump out there and say, Bent Coop or, you know, whatever you called yourself back then, you know what I'm saying, because we all have transitions and we evolved from uh, I was this person and then now I'm this person, this is yeah. my stage name. How did that affect you as far as pressing play and releasing, you know what I'm saying, those aspects of your creativity, though? Shit, at first, bro, I was fucking with... Uh... My close peeps, man, and we formed a uh, group called Gang Green, bro. And uh, Gang Green, Gang Green. Oh, okay, talk to me. N-W-G. Shout out Gang Green. That's what it was. Talk bro. to me. Was on that shit, man. Twan, rest in peace, LKC, bro. I got yeah, uh, yeah. Rest in peace, my cousin buddy. Ike. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. My homie Doughboy. You know what I'm uh-huh. saying? We was we was putting in some uh some good music, bro. Putting in all that work, and then uh you know pretty much just moving forward, bro. It was just kind of like you know, I I kind of hit a hiatus, and then I got back into it. Mm-hmm. So a lot of my shit, bro, I just been going to the studio to handle. You know, what I'm saying I I don't keep shit locked up mm-hmm. necessarily as far as putting it on wax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep it locked up as far as releasing it, and oh, that's my okay. goal this year, bro. I gotta put all that shit out. Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm saying I'm trying to at least shoot for three this year, and I already got the track list in order. Mm-hmm. I just need to figure out the dates and the rollout, man, and Shit. So there's actually a method, you know what I'm saying? To Definitely. You, that's a good thing. Definitely. Um, is there a strategy, a process, or, you know, some type of diabolical way that you go about handling your business? Because, you know, some people, when you look at how they release, how they, you know what I'm saying, type of, like, put everything to the world as far as their craft, their music, they have their own unique way. I know some people that only do shows. They do one song a year, but they do hella shows. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then you got people that don't do really too many shows, but then here they are releasing hella music, and you're like, damn. So you're not even, you know, kind of networking with the community and, you know, with the uh, your fans and shit, You but you on iTunes, you're on Spotify, and you're on YouTube a lot. But your presence, you know, tangible, like, you know, being tangible in the community is just like kind of like, you know, standoffish, you know? Yeah. But do you mean that in a way of like just like how they roll out their music? Yeah. Just how you deliver your shit to the, you know, the the fans, the community or to the world. I mean, honestly, I'm going to keep it a thousand. Uh, I'd be rolling it out just to the platforms major, mostly. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to still find ways to incorporate myself yeah. around the community. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I definitely got some shit that I'm thinking about, mm-hmm. but it's a matter of putting that together. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Sure. So definitely, you know, there's a couple of pop-ups and shit that I'm uh, mm-hmm. hoping to attend in the near future. Yeah, guarantee. Actually, there's one in um, late August, or sorry, late March yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, at the Beehive in Renton. I'm thinking about popping through. Okay. So definitely, if you guys Shout need to work out, yeah, yes, sir, uh, slide through there because it's gonna it's gonna be some some dope artists mm-hmm. and some dope vendors happening. But as far as just like really releasing it, bro, I'm just trying to uh, I'm trying to still figure out the whole scheme. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I know how to get it off online. Yeah, guarantee. But it's like you say, I gotta connect with that inner city vibe. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And that's really how you get on in the city anyhow. So. Yeah, facts. And this is where you perfect your playbook. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Because you know you can have this shit perfected in practice. Yes, sir. But when it comes to the game, it's all about touchdowns, first downs, and winning championships. So there's always a, a, a heads and tails to yeah. you know everything that we do. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And which is good because you know you never can just say I got this shit down packed off top. I don't think the dopest motherfucker you ever known in your life mm-hmm. got that shit to the to the T. Talk to me. 
And that's what and they that's mean. that's keeping it real, bro. That's no. the game. And that's the beautiful thing because that's what they mean by perfecting your craft. Yes, sir. And it goes beyond just writing or rehearsing. It goes about business and release and, yes, you know, being able to, you know, figure out ways to, you know, engage, you know, everybody that, you know, wants to, uh, are, are curious, divide curious or, you know, that don't know about you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, sure. you know. Um. How do you feel the music industry, the indie scene, the support, and just everything going on within the Seattle hip hop scene, you know, say can help you prosper and, and you know elevate to the next level? I think it's a beautiful time, bro. Mm-hmm. It's definitely oversaturated, but it's a beautiful time. Mm-hmm. Imagine, you know, twenty years ago, niggas had to go through all the right channels man for real <laughs> every single channel bro you had to do it the right way or there was no play you either had to know somebody you know what i'm saying or really just been that sound you yeah. know what i'm saying and it's just now bro niggas can bubble overnight Facts. you know what i'm saying so it's just man getting online bro might be have been the, the best thing to happen for mm-hmm. certain individuals who been trying to push your shit for a while. Yeah, for sure. You know sure. what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, I don't know, bro. I, I, I respect the time I'm in. Yeah, and that's a beautiful thing, too, because being able to respect the realm of the industry right now, mm-hmm. quote-unquote independent, indie, yeah. uh, a mainstream, yeah. you know, whatever you want to call it, it's a unique time for artists and for, you know, saying yeah. uh, publishers or, you know, saying writers and shit, because it's like. I have a lane. I have an industry. Where is the tunnel? Where is mm-hmm. the bridge? Mm-hmm. How can we connect everything or how people can get on the bridge or get in the tunnel to where they can, you know, what I'm saying kind of be, you know, what I'm saying in the limelight of what's going on, because sometimes it's like a bus stop. You know what I'm saying? You, you know what I'm saying? Nah, bro? A thousand. You feel me? A thousand percent. Yeah. 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 It's just, you know, I don't know, bro. I, like I said, I, the independent wave, bro, to me is where it's at. These, these record companies might sound good, bro, but honestly, I just don't think it's the, the move, bro. And I'm I'm cool with never, ever getting a record deal, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I long like as that. I can be pushing my shit, bro, and influencing who I influence, bro, that's me, bro. That's cool. But, 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 it's cool. Who is cool? <laughs> no, seriously. Like, who are you? What's your identity? Is your identity beyond the music? Is it beyond methods, which is the brand we're going to get into that? Or is it like a mixture, a gumbo pot of ideas, of personalities, of ways of life that you kind of, you know what I'm saying, reverse back into who you are and your process mm-hmm. of creating your craft? Let's talk about that. I don't know, bro. I think from Coop for me, bro, is first way. First of all, it was generated in high school. Mm-hmm. I got that name fucking around when I was playing basketball. Oh, okay. Lazy. Yeah. <laughs> cool, too laid back. Yeah, Time yeah. Hit a couple threes that flashy yeah. shit in the cool. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, this is just bullshit, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, and then, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, they used to call me Ben Coop at, uh, at school, bro. And I just kind of ran with it. But basically, bro, it kind of just. It symbolized who I was, though. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I only really smooth. Yeah, it's just I'm. But you know, luxurious. <laughs> bro, I'm just saying, like, I'm just, I'm just follow. I'm just with the waves, bro. Yeah, yeah, guarantee. I don't. You know what I'm saying? I don't force nothing. Yeah, yeah. I'm not no high flyer. Yeah, man. I'm chilling, bro. Yeah, for sure. But, but I'm going to score buckets, though. Best believe, but I'm though. Score. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> best believe, though. I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah. Coop, bro, that's who. That's what Coop is. And yeah, it's how you yeah. live your life, man. Mm-hmm. You want to go work your your nine to five, bro. Bust your ass and then mm-hmm. come home and chill. Cool. For sure. For Cooping. Sure. For sure. You know what I'm saying? You want to? You know what I'm saying? You want to stay at home, all get, Cooping, yeah. bro. I'm you cooping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. However like you, that. however you want to look at it, bro. I like but that, that's, man. That's, I like that's what that. Coop is, bro. I like that. You know. Chilling. And you know when a man or a woman can identify the character, their personality. And pinpoint who they are, and that's what sets them apart, and you know creates their identity for the world. Yeah. You know, those are some of the key things. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people are fighting an identity crisis, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm it's saying? Tough. Every social media platform, there's somebody different. It's tough. From TikTok, 
to Facebook, to Instagram, to YouTube, mm-hmm. to, you know what I'm saying? Only fans or whatever, you know what I'm saying? That's there's somebody awesome different, bro. Yeah. And there's no one identity or person that we can kind of highlight to say that's him, that's her. Mm-hmm. It's like, damn. You were just on motherfucking YouTube. I mean, not YouTube, but Facebook with your baby in the background shaking your totally, booty. Totally different. But then you're a professional on uh, blah, blah, blah. But then you're this person on blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, and you oh, work yeah. at the news uh, station on, uh, you know, KBC uh, News. I hear It's you. like we don't even know how to take you serious. Right. How do we handle you? How do we How do we navigate you? this? Or do we dismantle you? Yeah. Do we do we do release you? To the world. <laughs> I don't know how to handle you. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, so, you know, and that's I, some of the. It's just that. I mean, bro, you got to you gotta know who you are. You got to mm-hmm. fall into that, bro. At the same time, bro, you can always place that same bit of you, bro, into whatever you're doing. Mm, talk to and me. And that's just. Talk to me. That's cool, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's just what I do, bro. Shit, I work. A, I work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and ain't nothing wrong with that. Hey, you feel me? Look, ain't nothing you know, wrong with that, that's man. That's me, bro. I, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm all the way him, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's just handling my business, bro. You know what I'm saying I did get in school, all that shit, bro. No, yeah. no fool gaze you over. Yeah, here, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Strictly business. <laughs> yeah, I, strictly business. Even, you know what I'm saying? But it's just like that's who I embrace. Who, what I had, what I was doing. Yeah, bro. yeah, 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 yeah. I don't care. But that's your method. Do you feel me? That's how that's I got. Method. That's talk to him. You feel what I'm saying? I don't even got to finish it because you know what you know. Come what I'm on, saying. bro. Yeah, this yeah. shit always makes sense when you understand, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, the nature of how the tree is watered and how it's grown. A lot of people don't understand because they don't look at the root of what is popping and what's popping and what's going on because yeah. it's like, oh, I'm trying to figure out why Game 365 or Methods or mm-hmm. Ike Watson or blah, 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 is, you know, how they're doing what they're doing. But sometimes you overlook the fact that how the seed was planted and how the shit was watered. Sir. This shit don't happen overnight, bro. Big. 10,000 hours. <laughs> 10,000 jumps. Am I lying, family? You know what I'm saying? No. You see what I'm saying, bro? For shit. real. Oh, shit. Let's speed up, man. What we got going on, man? I mean, you know, you got any new singles? You got any new songs, EPs? Should I just uh, release the... Uh... Oh, that was on me this time, y'all. <laughs> I'm talking about don't have your shit on. Hey, look. <laughs> That's on me. I'm you got a prank you. call. Yeah, I had a prank. How you <laughs> turn this shit off? Go ahead, bro. Fuck That's it. good. Uh, but nah, man, uh... Uh, I just released a, not a new single, but a newer single now. It's about two, three months old. Uh, mm-hmm. called Same One. Yeah, I'm, yeah. On, I'm on Spotify, man. Been cool. I'm Go look for Same shit. One, y'all. All that shit, but uh, also, bro, I definitely got some shit in the works. Like I said, bro, I got, I got track lists on, in line. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of, of figuring out the release, the release rollout package. So yeah. Uh, but uh, I got some shit happening with my brother Coon. Uh, mm-hmm. Goon, sorry, I didn't call that nigga Coon. Hey man, <laughs> I know some coons fuck, out here hey, too. Fucking around my family. I bro. know them some niggas. coons. Out here too. <laughs> them niggas is ill. And that wasn't even I supposed know to happen like goons. that. But like, nah, fuck them. My, my brother Goon, bro, we got some <laughs> shit happening, bro. We got to release a video on old tape, man. Yeah. I got a uh, a la carte package happening, man, where it's just a, kind of some background shit that I've been doing. Mm-hmm. Trying to get that shit out of here so I can release the, the real rollout. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully that happens by the end of the year, man. And yeah. Got the new gear popping. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk about the gear, man. Yes, sir. You know, uh, give us the process on how it all started, the uh, idea behind it, the method to the madness, <laughs> uh, the strategy. That's and funny. you don't got to give us the sauce. We don't uh, want to know who your logo designer and how you get in the kitchen and cook, but we want to uh, know... Like, you know, some of the things that, you know, gave you the idea. Like, what was it, man? Did you wake up one day and said, I got a method to this shit? Or, you know, what was it, bro? Uh, man, it kind of just came from over time. But honestly, I think the main influence was figuring out the culture I'm in. Figuring out where I am in the world at the moment. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So a lot of people, I feel like, base they status or their success or whatever the case may be on other motherfuckers bro yeah a lot of people put pressure on other people to make them feel good about themselves wow that's powerful you know what i'm saying so validation hell yeah yeah validation instant gratification yeah 
all that shit, bro. Yeah. Niggas just don't even know how to. I don't feel like niggas don't even know how to like handle shit no more. Hey, my homeboy used to tell me when I was <laughs> locked up, a lot of motherfuckers afraid of the man in the mirror. Bro, it's weird, bro. Man. You know what I'm saying? So basically, man, bro, methods is formed out of that, bro. It's just finding your own way to be successful in whatever that you feel like you're doing. Mm-hmm. It's getting done type shit. Mm-hmm. And basically that just kind of, uh, it just puts a magnifying glass over the, uh, the culture we're in, bro. And it's just... You know, saying basically, man, find your own success. You don't have to follow the hype. You know what I'm saying? You can create your own. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's just a matter of putting that's powerful, man. Putting uh putting that pedal to the floor, bro. Believe in yourself, man. What they say, shoot your shot. Shoot your shot, man. Hey bro, what you (laughs) bro, what you what you what you wait for, what you got to lose. You know what I'm saying? Whatever that is, bro, pull that trigger, man. You got any hip hop quotables? You got the uh uh no I'm saying hip hop quotables you got the like I heard you saying no but I'm saying like you know any things mm. that you live by that you know from when you were younger growing up because I got some shit I used to uh, get the Source magazine bro and they used to have hip hop quotables and I used to be like this nigga Nas has said that <laughs> or you know what I'm saying bro, like to be honest is I I think it'll be hard to pull that out right now. top three hip hop quotables man give me a I, bar I, I a bar of peace. And I ain't talking about candy. There's no way, bro. I can't do it right now. Man. I don't think I can pull them out like that. Okay, well, pull out your top five best artists of Seattle. Ooh. <laughs> pull them out, man. Seattle. Bring them out. Bring them out. I need to know yeah, who you listening to, who you rock with. Because sometimes the, the the fans and people get to see that's where your swag aligns with. It might not be where you get your swag from because you got methods to this shit. Yeah. But where your swag aligns with. Because sometimes, you know, I got mood music, bro. I might listen to a motherfucker for a whole month and might listen to him again for 10 years. Because that was where my mood was at for that month. I think so, that's just music in general, though. Yes, sir. That's music. That's just yes, how sir. music is. All the time, bro. Yeah. I got jazz in my playlist. Talk to bro. me. I got rock. Marilyn Monroe, everybody. No, I play. <laughs> I, don't know, I, don't I don't even know what a she Marilyn didn't even Monroe sing. song is. I know. Okay. She I'm didn't, like, she didn't sing. Even... I'm just talking shit, but, but nah, you know but, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But basically, basically, bro, there's always a mood to what you're listening to, bro. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But uh, I don't know, bro. It's hard to pinpoint five artists in seattle bro i don't even give me top three bro i don't even give me honestly, one god damn bro. honestly there's nobody that i feel like that's really ike watson god hella, damn man hella standing whatever out. ike do is what's going on man hella standing god, out damn. let's put this shit on the wax bro now, <laughs> listen to what i'm saying though it's just like as far as actually five artists yeah i, I could be biased and choose five artists yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what i'm saying but i honestly don't know five artists that's really dope like that like i feel like everybody produces the same sound Ooh, let's talk about the sound it's the sound right now so let's talk about this go ahead go I ahead i will bro. shout out ike watson though yeah guarantee you. <laughs> talk to I me i will shout out ike watson guarantee i think i'll shout out uh can can the mac bro i'd be liking his little flavor yeah yeah you know yeah yeah but shout out can the mac man first of all and yeah. it's just like, you know what I'm saying? Uh I don't know of uh what's the dude's name, man? Uh he be fucking with bass kids, bro. Uh, ooh, ooh. from the town? I don't even know if he's from the town. Shoot the shot. But they always push his shit on uh on uh Highway? dub C. Highway? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah his Shout shit, out Highway, his man. Shit's flavorful, you Come know what get I'm on the podcast, man. <laughs> yeah, we you know what I'm saying? There's a couple there's a couple of people, bro, like uh uh uh, what's old boy's name too? I can't even think about it right now. But there's a few. It's people all I good, man. Cross, bro, but it's basically, yeah. Shout it's, out Chopolay, man. Yeah, pop, yeah, 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 yeah. Free Chopolay, yeah. yeah. home, the bro. Free Chopolay. Yeah, man. Free that boy. Yeah. But um, you know, I was just kind of curious about you know where you pull from you know some type of mood music and sound and you know some of the things that you and, may and you to, know yeah yeah you feel me because nah, to be honest, it's like. I'm kind of out the loop for real, for real, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. know, I need to I need to tune all the way in with the city, but it's like I don't get enough. I don't see, I don't see nothing. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So I don't know where to look. And your perspective is your perspective. You but can't. No, no, no. 
it's just Nobody like I know people's working. Yeah. But it's like, where are you putting this shit out at? Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. even know. I don't see yeah, nothing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just like, I don't even know how to tune into your mm-hmm. shit. Is it just for the internet? Is it for yeah, hype? I be seeing niggas just drop shit all, you know uh-huh. what I'm saying? But it's just like, okay, my, where's the, where's the link? Uh, what's your definition of game, bro? Damn. Game, bro, is just, uh, it's lacing the shoes, man. Talk to me. In any aspect, any aspect, bro, and mm-hmm. every single thing that you do, bro, is lacing the shoes, bro. If I want to go and learn how to do, play golf tomorrow, bro, mm-hmm. and, the, and the old man's here, and he's like, oh, no, I seen that. That's horrible. Let's yeah, just, let me yeah. teach you some shit. That's game. Humble yourself and get laced. Yeah, bro. That's, mm-hmm. It's lacing up, bro, and mm-hmm. it's just uh, game can go a long way, bro. Facts. Game 365. Talk to me, man. Put you there. Growth, ambition, motivation, excellence. Talk to him. Um... Do you see evolution in your career, or do you feel like there's a ceiling? I think that ceilings are definitely for real. Mm -hmm. I think where you move to can change that ceiling. Where you go, how you you know if you if you decide to stay in Seattle, I feel like there will always be a ceiling. But it's as long as you can push that with you and go to wherever you're going and grow that ceiling, I, I think it just gets as big as you want it to get. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, at that point, I really feel like there's no ceilings. Yeah. But I feel like the certain things in, your, in the way you move, bro, you got to get out of where you, where you currently are. Facts. That's just anything. Facts. Anything. I don't care if it was... You want to do karate for the rest of your life? Yeah, guarantee. If the, you was in a place mm-hmm. that everybody did karate, mm-hmm. it's like you got to move, bro. You got to yeah. go somewhere where people want to fuck with you. Know, yeah, anyways, man. Uh, last question: Do you feel like a woman can hurt or excel your career in the music industry? That's up and down. <laughs> I think sometimes your focus can shift. Mm-hmm. And put you can place the, uh, you know, what I'm saying the magnifying glass on other shit that you really ain't supposed to be focusing on at this time. Mm-hmm. But there's other times where that same person can motivate you to push you to higher ceilings, can do things with you, for you, about you. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Facts. So it's an up and down, bro. And I honestly feel like in the end, bro, it might be good to have some. Some women on your side, bro. For sure. Your, your girl, your sister, your 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 peoples. You gotta you Guaranteed. gotta you gotta fam of females that arrive with you. Mm-hmm. You do whatever you you need to do, bro. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, bro. I think it's a good thing. Big cool. Game three sixty five podcast, man. Maybe two of them. Lost it all, made it back, had to get right. Uh, it's been a long night. Big shoe print, can't step with us. Check your resume, it don't mess up. Not close at all, too close to call. These niggas don't know the angles, close them off. If she fuck with me, she ain't pacing. In the end, a nigga post the ball. You impulse to talk, you're stroking off. I'll send the packs and do the dance.